Hello viewers and welcome to ITTV. I wish you a very good day and I hope that you will enjoy this lesson. Let's begin right away. This is our last lesson on the Chapter 1 of the Form 4 Additional Mathematics Syllabus, which is the chapter on functions. And we've been dealing a lot with several issues related to functions. This time around, we're going to look at more detail into the topic of inverse functions. Determining the inverse function. Previously, viewers, we were able to find the image and the object for various functions. And particularly in the previous lesson, we looked at how to use the concept of inverse to find back the object when we were given the image. But what about the actual inverse function itself? How do we find the expression for the inverse function? Whatever method used, make sure that the exact steps in the same order are carried out every time. Now let's look at the illustration given. For instance, find the inverse function of f which maps x onto 2x minus 3. Step 1. To make it more easy to handle, let us change the symbol fx into y. So we will begin by saying, let y equals to 2x minus 3. Step 2. Make x the subject of the formula. That means we want to rearrange the expression such that x is left on the left-hand side and everything else is transferred over to the right. So where formerly y was equal to 2x minus 3, now 2x will be equal to y plus 3. And hence, x will be y plus 3 over 2. The next step is very crucial, viewers, and that is to switch x and y. That means, in place of x, you write y, and in place of y, you write x. We had found that x is equal to y plus 3 over 2, and when we perform this step of switching, it will now become y equals to x plus 3 over 2. And finally, the algebraic expression in x on the right side of the equation, sign, is the required inverse function. That means to say, viewers, you have already arrived at your answer for finding the inverse function. And hence, we can change back the symbol y into the function notation for inverse, which is f negative 1 of x, and it is equal to x plus 3 over 2 in this example. Right, viewers, now it's our turn to try. So let's look at the next example, and we'll do it on the board together. Given that fx is equal to 5 minus 3x over 2, determine the inverse function f negative 1. Well, the function f of x is equal to 5 minus 3x over 2, and we're trying to find the inverse function for this. f of x is a symbol that's rather bulky to use, so to make it more manageable, let's just change it into the letter y for now. So we're going to say, let y equals to 5 minus 3x over 2. And do you recall what's the next step? We want to rearrange this expression such that x becomes the subject of the formula. So what will be required is to slowly do it step by step until we end up with just x on the left hand side and everything else on the right hand side. So the first thing we'll have to do is to multiply both sides with 2, thereby getting rid of the denominator. And then we'll have to transfer the term of negative 3x to the left, while at the same time, let's also transfer 2y over to the right, giving us 3x is equal to 5 minus 2y. And since this is 3 times x, x alone will be 5 minus 2y over 3. And the next step, in my opinion, is the most important step when you're trying to find inverse functions. And that is to swap the letters x and y. Let me just put it down here in a notation form. Just as a reminder for us, 
to tell us what we should do in our very next step. So, x becomes y and y becomes x. And that's almost it, viewers. This expression is actually the inverse function, meaning to say that it is the function that will change the image back into its object. But, as always, since we are finding the inverse function, we ought to give it the proper notation and so we're going to change the symbol of y back into the symbol for inverse function which is f negative 1x and copy back the expression on the right. So there you have it. The inverse function for our original fx is equal to 5 minus 2x over 3. So that was the algebraic way to calculate or to find the expression for the inverse function. But does an inverse function always exist? Let's read on. Determining conditions for the existence of an inverse function. There will be times when a function does not have an inverse. And in the diagram given below, viewers, we have an illustration of the times when a function does not have an inverse. You see below on the diagram, the left-hand side contains two object values sharing the same image. And if you remember, viewers, this is classified as a many-to-one relation. Now, a many-to-one relation is a proper function. But observe what happens when we apply the inverse function. What does an inverse function do? It maps the image back onto the object. And so, if in the original case, two objects share the same image, then the inverse function will change the image back into the two objects. This means that we have a case in the inverse function of a one-to-many situation. Now, a one-to-many relation is not considered a proper function. Therefore, the inverse does not exist. To conclude, therefore, only one-to-one -one functions have inverse functions. Many-to-one functions do not have inverse functions. Now, that's something very important and useful to remember, viewers. One-to-one -one functions will have inverses simply because a one-to-one -one function is a case where every object will be mapped onto only one image. And so if you go backwards, so to speak, because that's what the inverse function does, it will map every image back to one object. Hence, the inverse function also will be a one-to-one -one relation. And since a one-to-one -one relation is a proper function, therefore both the function and their inverse becomes proper functions. That's why it's easy to remember that a one-to-one -one function will have inverse. However, in the uh, illustration that you saw in the slides, a many-to-one, although it is a function, produces an inverse of one-to-many relation, which is not a function after all. So, do remember this rule. One-to-one -one functions will have inverses, but many-to-one functions do not have inverses. As an example, a one-to-one -one function could be a straight line that has a linear function for example, y equals to 2x plus 1. Now, can you visualize it in your head? y equals to 2x plus 1 will be a line that has a positive gradient and going upwards, being a straight line, it only has one image for every value of x. So, if you were to reverse the direction of your uh, values, every value of y will find only one value of x. So, the example of a straight line, a linear function, always has an inverse. Look at the example in the next slide for a case of many-to-one functions. Look at the graph below, where fx is equal to x squared plus 1. Now, if you look at the x values, for example, both x equals to 1 and x equals to negative 1, produce the same y-coordinate, which is 2. And if you were to try, starting from the two x-values of 1 and negative 1, going to the graph and meeting back at the y-axis, 
you will get only one answer which is 2, thereby confirming that fx is a many to one function. Yes, it is still a proper function, but it is a many to one classification. In the next diagram, if you were to start from the y value this time of 2 and go to the graph and drop back down to the x-axis, you will find that you get two different values of x, which are 1 and negative 1 respectively. Hence, the inverse is a one-to-many situation and that is not a function because the y value of 2 had two images. So let's remember this rule, viewers. One-to-one -one functions have inverse functions. Many-to-one functions do not have inverse functions. Now let's see how we can apply that to several cases. In this example, determine whether the inverse of each of the following functions is a function. Explain your answer. For part A, the function x maps the object onto the image according to the rule of x plus 2. And so you will see that the values of x which are 1, 2 and 3 are mapped onto the function values or the image values of 3, 4 and 5 respectively. In part b, the relation g maps negative 2, 1 and 2 from the object set onto 1 and 2 only from the range set under the relation of absolute value of x. For part c, the function h x is equal to sine x where the domain is from 0 to 360 degrees and for part d, the function k x is also equal to sine x but this time the domain is from 0 to 90 degrees. Looking back at part A, do observe that the situation we have before us is a one-to-one -one case. Every value of x only has one image, which is x plus 2. If you were then to reverse the direction of the arrows, you would realise that we will also obtain a one-to-one -one situation, thereby confirming that the inverse f-1 is a function. And this is because f is a one-to-one -one function itself. But part b tells us a different story. Do observe the set of the object values viewers. Two of the objects, which are negative 2 and 2, are mapped onto only one image, which, are, which is 2, thereby giving us a many-to-one relation, which is a function for g, but if you were to reverse the arrows, you will find that the value of 2 from the image set goes back to the values of negative 2 and 2 from the object set. Now, this means that the inverse maps a value back to two images. Hence, that makes it a one-to-many situation and therefore the inverse is not a function because the original function of g is a many-to-one function. In part c, the function of h is equal to sine x where x lies between 0 to 360 and this produces a graph with a complete sine x curve as you see before you. Notice that two values of x may produce only one answer for y or shall I say the image which is h of x. Therefore, the reverse which will then give us the inverse function will become a one-to-many situation and therefore the inverse is not a function because hx is a many-to-one function for the domain of 0 to 360 degrees. But part d tells us something extra. If we restrict the domain for the same function, sine x, but only considering x values from 0 to 90 degrees, you will notice, viewers, that every value of x is only mapped onto one value of y. And that means, within this domain, 
the original function is a one-to-one -one relation, thereby the inverse is also a one-to-one -one relation, and hence the inverse k negative one is a function because kx is a one-to-one -one function only within the domain of zero to 90 degrees. So viewers, you can see that sometimes when we change the domain of a function, we will be able to make the inverse into a proper function too. Well viewers, that brings us to the end of chapter 1 and it's a good idea if we just ran through all the topics or concepts or issues that were discussed in this chapter. We started the chapter by discussing the concept of relations, how a certain value is related to another and there were various classifications of relations, namely one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-one and many-to-many. We also learned the meaning of various terms such as domain, codomain, object, image and range. We also learned how to represent relations. You can do it through one of three ways, which are either through a set of ordered pairs or through an arrow diagram or through a graph. These are various ways to represent relations. Now, a special type of relation is what we call functions and there are certain conditions as to when a relation is classified as a function. Namely, one-to-one -one and many-to-one -one relations only are functions. We then moved on from there to discuss combining more than one function to become what is called composite functions, simply because the word composite means to combine. After discussing composite functions, we finally moved on to inverse functions, which are functions which can map the image back to the original objects. This is basically what Chapter 1 is all about in the Form 4 Additional Mathematics Syllabus. I hope you've been able to understand all the things we've discussed and I hope that it helps you as you revise your mathematics. Goodbye then from ITTV.